Hello? Do you hear me? Hello, everybody? Okay. So, uh, welcome to my session about Drupalize your data use entities. My name is uh, Wolf Ziegler, or you might know me as Fargo, as my nickname on Drupal.org. I'm a Drupal developer from uh, Vienna, Austria, and I studied there at the Technical University at Vienna. I studied computer science, and I'm doing Drupal since 2005. Um, you might know me from some country projects I'm maintaining, like the rules module, uh, field collection, profile 2, or the entity pair module. And I'm also uh, one of the maintainers of the form API and entity API core subsystem, subsystems. Yes, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, the entity API in uh, Drupal 7. And I'll start with a short introduction about entities. And then I'll show you how you can interact with entities. And I'll also show you how you can provide a new entity type based on, on the database and how you uh, can use the entity API to expose non-database based uh, in, uh, data as entities to the system. And uh, at the very last, uh, we'll have a short outlook into uh, the future and uh, see uh, what's going on in Drupal 8 and how the entity API uh, is going to evolve there. Okay. <clears throat> So in, in Drupal 7, I think really the, the main uh, major shift uh, has been that we can use fields yeah, basically everywhere. So with that, there has been uh, uh, the introduction of a new uh, foundational object, uh, which is basically what our entities now. Uh, the foundational objects that are fieldable are all entities. So uh, every... Uh, object you can put fields on is an entity, but there are also uh, entities that are not fieldable. So you can still use the entity API with it, you can save it, load it, and so on, but you can't put fields on it. So fields are optional. So in, in Drupal 7, in addition to entities, there's also that concept of bundles. So a bundle is basically, um, I would say, the subtype uh, of an entity type. It's uh, best explained if we compare, uh, have uh, look at the analogy uh, of nodes. So in the case of the entity type node, uh, the, the bundles are the node types. So really, the bundles that determine uh, the fields you can put on a certain entity on a, on a certain node. Or <coughs> if we have a look at another uh, entity type uh, at taxonomy terms, here that uh, vocabulary a terms belong to, uh, that determines the bundle. So there are also the vocabulary that determines uh, which fields you can use on the term. And uh, another example would be the user accounts in Drupal 7, uh, which uh, don't have different bundles. So there's uh, just uh, one set of fields uh, you can put on, on different user accounts. Yes, that's it. So in, in Drupal core, we have uh, multiple entity types. So we have comments, we have nodes, also user accounts are entities, as well as taxonomy terms, vocabularies, and fields. Uh, but not all of those are fieldable. So uh, vocabularies and files aren't fieldable in, in Drupal core itself. Uh, but uh, in addition to that, uh, contrib modules can define new entity types, and a lot of modules make use of that uh, possibility, uh, like Drupal Commerce, which extends a bunch of, uh, uh, adds a bunch of entity types like products, orders, and so on. Also, organic groups uh, makes use of entities. For example, give it uh, adds an, a membership entity for storing organic group membership information. Then there's the Profile 2 uh, module I'm also maintainer of, which uh, implements user profiles as uh, separate entities. And the uh, heartbeat and message modules uh, use entities to store activity stream entries or general messages as separate entities. And lastly, the file entity module doesn't really introduce a, a new entity type, but it changes the existing entity type, which is in core, the file entity, and uh, uh, makes it fieldable. So as we see, there are uh, kind of different modules that uh, add further entity types to the system. but uh, uh, 
there's even more. There are lots of modules that build on, on the concept of entities without uh, providing a new entity type. So I would say since Drupal 7, there's really a, a big shift which uh, goes on. If we, if we think about uh, Drupal 6 and beyond, uh, most content modules you download it uh, basically worked with nodes. So if you download it, for example, give them a voting module, you would expect it to work on a node. But with Drupal 7, there's, there's really now the shift from uh, node-centric modules to entity-centric modules. If you download a, a content module in Drupal 7, you ideally expect it to work with basically every entity or at, at least with every fieldable entity. And I, I really expect that to continue and uh, that's the future, I think, for Drupal. So you might wonder what you can use the Entity API for now. So it's basically uh, a unified way to access the data of Drupal. So all the data that Drupal has is exposed as an entity and that way modules can make use of it easily. The following diagram um, shows how the relationship is. So on the, on the right side, we basically see uh, solution modules like uh, a module which implements a, a search functionality or voting or grouping like the organic groups module. There's also an entity reference module which uh, makes it uh, possible to reference arbitrary entity types uh, just like you know it from uh, node references. What is the rules module which also uh, supports uh, dealing with every entity type. And all uh, of, the, of those modules uh, work generally with entities, uh, whereas an entity can be an basically any uh, data type that is uh, exposed as entity to Drupal. So there are users, nodes, comments, but also profiles and products, so the extended uh, entity types that contrib modules provide work the very same way. And this is very neat because uh, we don't have to write integration between each of those, but uh, the, uh, the solution modules can concentrate on uh, doing the integration uh, for entities and the data providing modules uh, just have to make sure that they properly provide the data as an entity and they will automatically gain the functionality of all the solution modules. So how can you do this? How can you do a solution module that works with any entity type. <coughs> For this, uh, the Contrib Entity API module is a great help. I'm also the maintainer of this one, and the Contrib Entity API module basically assists you, well, with interacting with entities, and also with uh, providing a new entity type. So we'll start with the first one, and this is basically an overview over all the uh, functions, uh, all the helper functions that are available around entities. And in, in the inner circle, uh, Drupal Core we see in Core we have mostly uh, a way to uh, define entity information, so to define, uh, <coughs> to declare metadata about the entity, and a way to load entities. There are also some other helper functions like a way to get the label and the UI, but that's basically it. So in Drupal Core, you have the functionality to load an entity, but the Entity API module uh, cares about extending that to full card functionality. So there are helpers uh, to uh, create an, an entity of an arbitrary type, also to delete uh, those entities or to save them. Then there are helper functions like Entity View and Entity Access, which uh, allow you to, to render an entity or to check uh, access information for it. And there's uh, the function which is called Entity Get Property in Info, uh, which uh, tells you which uh, properties an entity type has. And this functionality is also used uh, by the Entity Metadata Wrappers, which are uh, created with the Entity Metadata Wrapper function. And these wrappers are basically helper objects that uh, make it easier to interact with entities and make it easier to make use of all of that functionality by wrapping the entity object into another object. It basically uh, works that way, that way as we see in the, in the first line, you uh, create the wrapper by using the entity metadata wrapper function, tell uh, the function uh, which entity type you want to wrap 
and you pass uh, to it uh, the entity ID or the, the full entity object. And you will get a wrapper and you can work just with the wrapper. For example, given if you have a wrapped node, as in this example, you can easily access the node author's mail address just like by, uh, just like by accessing the, the entity properties <coughs> directly. And by accessing the, the entity property, we'll uh, receive another wrapper which wraps the entity property so we can chain through. And the wrapper of the, of the, no of the user, of the node author, the user account, supports also, uh, as it's a wrapper, you can uh, just use it the same way and get the mail wrapper. And from the mail wrapper, then finally, you just call value to get uh, the wrapped value, which is the mail address. The very same way, you, you can just use uh, the wrappers to, to update entity properties, like in this example. And that what is uh, also very neat is that it uh, works exactly the same way for entity properties and for fields. So it abstracts uh, the difficulties uh, that you have uh, with dealing with fields uh, for you. So you don't have to care about uh, the language uh, that the, the field is stored uh, by default. Uh, the system takes care of that for you. But still, if you need a, a specific translation, you, you can access that by, by code like this one. Mm. Also, the system uh, takes care about loading referenced entities for you. So as in this example, uh, it uses the term reference field, field tags, which references uh, multiple uh, term entities. So what you will get back here is actually an array of term objects. Mm. So multiple fields are, are and generally um, data that is multiple and has multiple entries is so represented as an array of data items. And you can just uh, use the array syntax to access uh, the first item or to append an, an item like that. Additionally, uh, the entity property info system provides some, some metadata about all properties and you can use the wrapper to access it. So in this example, it's used to just to access the options list, which declares uh, basically the options a user can choose when he inputs the value. <clears throat> also, there's uh, a label method, uh, which gets uh, the human readable label of a value, if there is one. So if you have an options list, it gets you uh, the uh, human readable value of the options list, or it also supports uh, getting an entity label. And also there's an uh, access method which helps you to check access and it automatically will uh, incorporate uh, field access for you as well as entity access. So it's uh, very useful if you need some simple, some simple access checks. Yep. Uh, so this would be an example for the entity property info which uh, is needed for all that entity metadata wrapper system to work. So for the wrapper to, uh, to um, allow accessing a, a property like the, the mail property we used in the example, the system needs uh, uh, information declaration uh, as we see here. Uh, this is also necessary for fields, but in the case of fields, it's automatically gen generated by the system for you as long as there's support for, for the field type. Mm. So uh, <coughs> when we have a look at the, the code, we see basically the information uh, adds a uh, human readable label and a description for, for all of the properties, but also a data type. Uh, and also there's some information which tells the system to how to update the data, how to validate uh, the new values uh, which uh, need to, uh, you want to set. It uh, tells the system whether it's actually a required property for a given entity type. Um, how it can ex check access on it, and schema field finally denotes the relation to a database uh, schema, so, uh, which, um, uh, so in, if you have it declared in hook schema to declare a database schema field, you can just uh, add the schema field to, to add the relation to it. So you might wonder what's all the, the property info for now, but basically it, um, allows you to uh, make use of the, all the entity data in a general way. Uh, without the entity property info, you wouldn't know um, what kind of properties an entity has and of which data type it would be, so you won't be able to use it generally. 
And also it enables you to, to validate data automatically or to, to check access on it. So if we have a look at how modules use this, there are some different ways modules make use of this actually. I would say that the simplest way modules use it is indirectly via the entity metadata wrappers. And this mostly do modules like uh, Drupal Commerce or few Spark operations or organic groups, which uh, rely on the entity metadata wrapper a lot uh, just to make, uh, to make it easier to work uh, a lot with entities and field values. So they just benefit from, from the simpler API. But then there are also modules like uh, rules and the search API, which really rely on the entity property information system a lot. So rules uh, really builds, builds up in the system uh, for getting data, but also for, for writing data in entities. And search API also makes use of the system to read the properties out of the entities in order to be able to index them. Then there's the microdata module which basically annotates uh, microdata mapping uh, based on the entity property information. And there are uh, also some web service related modules, uh, which are called RESTWS, which is the server side module. It's, it's basically an alternative module to the services module, and it's working generally based just on the entity information. So if you declare a new entity type, at the property information, it will automatically work for new entity type. The WS client is the web service client module. It doesn't uh, directly make use of that information, but it uh, makes use of the same way uh, to describe uh, data as the entity property information. And it uses that way to describe the, the data that is necessary in order to invoke a web service or when it gets the results back and exposes it then the data to the system. Then with the entity API module, there's already the entity tokens module included, uh, which basically ensures that there is an, a token available for each uh, entity property that is uh, known to the system. So it's very useful if you implement the entity property info API, you don't have to implement the, the token API again. Then it's just available when you turn on the entity token module. And also in the Entity API module, there are some uh, generic fuse fields, which make it possible to, to make uh, fuse that lists data, uh, not based on a database query you run, but it just makes use of entity load to load entities and then displays the data directly out of the entity object. This is also uh, used by, by the search API, for example, when it, uh, when you use its fuse integration. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's have a look at how you can provide a new entity type based on the database. Um, basically, you need to do uh, three simple steps. First, you have to implement hook entity info to declare a new entity type. Then you specify your controller class you wish to use there and you implement hook schema to define your database table. Uh, in core, there's a controller class uh, which you can use, and if you use that one, you basically get entity loading. Uh, then the entity API module provides another controller you can make use of, and if you use that one, you will uh, receive full CRUD functionality. So for example, given um, this code here, which is uh, from the profile two module, will automatically work also for your new uh, entity type uh, if once you use the entity API module provided controller. So you, use, uh, so you can use the entity create function to create a new entity. And what's also very nice with it is that you can actually make use of entity classes. So you can have classed objects and you can uh, define methods on it and can use some default methods on it, like saving an entity or deleting an entity. And you can also make use of uh, all the helper functions that are available, like entity delete uh, multiple in the entity API. Okay, so let's have a look on how you can integrate your newly provided entity type with all over Contrib. So the great thing is that the entity API module actually helps you uh, a lot with that. It has uh, quite some uh, additional controller classes which take uh, over integrating uh, your entity type with a, a certain contrib. 
For example, given there's a dedicated fuse controller which cares about integrating your entity type with fuse. Uh, that way, uh, you can easily customize all the integration the module provi provides. You just extend the default controller class, customize it as you, as you need, and specify uh, your own class. Okay, so to start, you uh, have to provide the entity information, uh, the CAD controller, and the schema, as already said. And uh, then uh, automatically the field API will be invoked and attached for you. So the, so the entity API controller cares about that. You don't have to do anything. You, uh, if you want to make use of fields, just uh, activate fields in hook entity info and you are done. Uh, then entity property information is also automatically generated out of the database schema, uh, but it's uh, not very complete and you really should complement it. For example, given if you have an integer, the system really cannot know whether it's an, an entity reference, whether it's reference as a node or a user, or whether it's just a timestamp. So you have to tell him that. So you can specify it, uh, that the, the data represents a node or a date, and then it will uh, automatically know how to work with it. <clears throat> and this is also what the fuse integration controller really makes use of. So uh, the fuse automation, uh, the fuse integration controller automatically provides really fully working fuse integration for you. And once you have specified all the entity references correctly in your property information, it will also generate automatically uh, relationships and reverse, reverse relationships to the other entities for you. Then there's the entity tokens module, which basically you just have to enable and you get all tokens for free. And uh, you will also get rules events automatically for your new entity type. And rules automatically has support for, for saving and loading entities anyway. And the very same way like that, you will receive integration for, uh, for every contrib module, which just adds support based upon all the available information. For example, given the search API does so, so if you install the search API, it will just work with your entity type. And just like that, I hope more and more module will come up and evolve to work the very same way. <coughs> then in addition to that, there's the uh, possibility to make an entity exportable. So my, you might know the concept of exportables from uh, CTools exportables. Uh, it's basically a way uh, to manage configuration so that you um, can save it in a database but still uh, ha export it into code, uh, put it into your module and uh, actually use um, versioning, stuff like Git and so on with it. Yeah, it's uh, really great for, for managing configuration. And with the Entity API, you can easily uh, make use of uh, exportables. Uh, you just have to uh, define a, a different Entity API controller, and basically that's all, um, and your entity is automatically exportable. Uh, it should be noted, uh, this is um, kind of a controversial topic because uh, some people of the community don't like uh, exposing configuration as an entity to the system. Um, I would say that there's no really a, a functional cause for that, it's more a matter of preference. Uh, I really like to do it because it helps you a lot and it uh, gives you a lot of integration, a lot of uh, great functionality for free. Uh, so um, I would say it's just up to you whether you want to use it or not, so everybody can just decide on its own. Yeah. So what are the advantages compared, for example, given to the CTools exportables implementation? So it has the unified CRUD interface as you know it from entities, so you, it's uh, really uh, uh, easy and seamless to work with but it also has a uh, slightly different approach as the entities are synced to the database. So each time uh, you have an uh, entity export into, into code and it's uh, uh, in a module, it will be automatically imported in the database. And this also enables a really important thing what um, uh, the regular grad hooks. So you will get the regular insert, update, and deletion hooks also for your configuration entities even if they are uh, exported in code, what makes it uh, really easy to react up uh, configuration changes. 
and the very same way as we have already seen it, you will also receive uh, fuse integration, tokens, stuff like that for uh, your exportable entity. And in addition to that, uh, in, in particular for the exportables, there's features integration and also the entity API helps you uh, with integrating with the ITNN, the internationalization module. Let's do this here anyway. So. Okay, let's have a look how you can integrate your exportable entity with the system. So it starts the very same way. You provide entity info, you specify your card controller, implement the schema, and then uh, you will get the property information generated, which you should complement again. Uh, nothing new, it's really the same. Uh, then features integration will just work out of the box. You, you have, don't have anything to do there. Uh, fuse integration, it's the same, it will just work. Uh, for ITN, uh, you have to complement uh, a little bit of code, but it's, it's not hard to do. You can just look at the example module, copy it over. Basically, the Entity API has some helpers which do um, most of the work for you already. And in addition to that, uh, there's also the token support you can just enable, and there's an administration UI, uh, which you can just enable uh, via a controller class, and the Entity API module basically provides a nice usable uh, management UI for adding and managing uh, your configuration. And what you have to do for this to work is basically you'll have to implement the entity edit form yourself, and the rest uh, is taken care of. So this is an example how the uh, generated UI would look like. This is actually the uh, user interface of Profile2 for managing profile types. So in, in Profile2, you can have um, multiple different types of pro profiles, like um, community profile or a customer profile, stuff like that. and this is the administration UI for it. It's really just the uh, admin UI as it is provided by the entity API. <clears throat> so let's stay a little bit at the example of Profile 2. Our Profile 2 is a, a really good example module for the entity API module because it makes use of most of its features. And uh, as I already mentioned, it implements the profiles as entities, but it also has uh, profile types which are also implemented as an entity type. And the profile types are exportable, so it's an exportable entity type, and you can make use of features and, and stuff like that uh, on it. Also, the profile types are declared to be the bundle of uh, the profiles. Uh, what tells the field API that uh, with adding a new profile type, you can also specify uh, different fields for this kind of profile. And uh, usually you also have to take care about uh, uh, invoking field API attachers for that to correctly to work, but in, in that case, also the entity API module takes care of that for you. So if we have a look at all the components uh, of the profile uh, two module, Basically, uh, what it has is uh, a system for storage. It has CRUD system, a field API. It implements some uh, permissions in the access system. It has a um, custom profile form and the display of the profiles. It makes use of the admin UI and uh, the internationalization inter integration of the entity API module. And it has fuse integration, C tools integration, supports rules, tokens, features. And it also works well with the search API. And if you have a look at that, basically most of it is provided by the Entity API module, but what's not provided is the permission and access system, which is implemented separately, and also the entity form and the, the display of the entity has to be written yourself, so it's really your job to take care of that. I think actually it makes sense that you have to take care of that, because stuff like the, the form or where the form is displayed, uh, and uh, where the entity, the rendered entity actually is displayed is really specific to your module, so, so no API can take care of that for you. But still, it yeah, might be useful to have some, some general defaults for it that uh, you could build up, but yeah, at least I think it's al already great and we have already lots of 
module integration generated for free, which you can build up. So I think we have our homework done, and it's really time to embrace that and to enjoy it. <coughs> so all that here works for database-based entities, but we can also make use most of it for non-database-based entities. <coughs> As we have the entity system, uh, we have now uh, separated the storage in a controller class, and we can easily exchange that. So we can uh, exchange the controller with our own controller. So you could do uh, easily an, a NoSQL controller, implement support for NoSQL databases, implement uh, support uh, for Doctrine uh, or PHP CR, which are PHP libraries. And or you could uh, implement remote entities, such that if you have a two Drupal site, you could uh, use that system to implement remote entities in one system to uh, display actually the data from the remote site on another one. And the very same way you can use it generally for data integration and uh, just uh, integrate any uh, data of um, remote systems in Drupal. <coughs> Basically, you just have to write your own storage controller, override some methods, implement the graph functionality, and it will work. But you might wonder, how does it relate to the field API? So if you have that non-database-based entities, uh, you could enable fields, but fields are really uh, stored separately currently in Drupal. There's a separated uh, storage system for it. So by default, the fields are going to be stored in the local database. So it's not uh, that easy uh, to uh, write a new uh, field API storage controller, but you can do it in order to uh, gain full support, in, uh, for example, given for NoSQL databases. But if you just want to implement um, a remote entity or integrate some remote data, it probably won't be a good idea because you usually won't be able to add fields to that data anyway. So in that case, we really just uh, have uh, to stay with a non-fieldable entity, with an entity that just has properties. So once you're providing um, non-database-based entities, it basically works the same way. You declare entity info, you specify your CRUD controller, your customly written CRUD controller, but instead of uh, declaring uh, the database schema, you just uh, specify the entity property information uh, upon which then the system and uh, the contributed modules can work. So <coughs> just like as we had before, all the uh, module integrations and all the modules that work based upon the entity property information would stay working. So you will get still working view support, you will get full support for rules and tokens, as well as for all the other modules which uh, work based upon the information. <coughs> so if we have a closer look at uh, what that buys, I think it's also very neat that you uh, easily get a, a class CRUD API then for your remote data, which has the uh, usual unique interface uh, but also which uh, statically uh, caches the data. So um, uh, if you access the remote data multiple times in a page route, it will be statically cached and accessed only once. And you could also enable um, modules like the entity cache module, which, uh, which is a separate uh, contributed module and uh, supports uh, caching entities in the uh, cache system of Drupal. So you can install memcache and cache your entities in there. Also, you uh, receive the uh, general CRUD hooks, so you will have all the usual insert, update, and delete hooks, so modules could even extend and customize uh, your remote entities. You will get the regular tokens based upon the entity property information, and you will be able to make use of all the, the modules that work generally with entities, like uh, you could use the entity reference module just to, to reference uh, your remote data. Uh, the very same way rules will just work with the remote entities, um, just as well as the rules link module. Uh, the rules link module is a, a small module which basically is similar to the flag module, but it uh, doesn't have the possibility to toggle a link, it just has the possibility to click a link and to fire uh, basically uh, some rule, a rule actions um, when your users are clicking it. <coughs> 
then what's also very neat, I think, is that you uh, can use the search API on remote entities. So you can uh, just index the remote entities and uh, build a full-featured faceted search on them. But what you have to take care of is about uh, the time when uh, your remote entities should be indexed. Uh, because um, usually uh, when you are working with remote entity, you, you won't receive any notifications when the remote entity changes. So you basically will have to implement uh, a cron best mechanism also to uh, re-index uh, your entities or you do it manually via the user interface. Um, you will also get fuse integration for your remote entities. But by default, it's of course a bit limited as there is no way uh, to filter. Uh, so you will be able to list your remote entities uh, as you have implemented a way to load them. Uh, but as the system doesn't know how to filter for them, uh, you won't have that possibility by default. So you would have to add custom filters uh, yourself. Uh, the REST WS module would work out of the box, so you'll, you would also get uh, support for that and hopefully also for more modules that work based a bit, uh, on the general concept of entities. Um, so I think that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and uh, Drupalize more data and expose your data as entities to Drupal and make it work with Drupal and all with the great contrib modules. And to show uh, how this works like, I've also done a small example. I've done an, a prototype module which uh, exposes uh, Google Picasso photos and, and albums as entities uh, to Drupal. Uh, at that URL, you find uh, the code. It's in a sandbox and you can just uh, enable the module, try it out and have a look at the code and uh, see how it's implemented. It's really not that difficult. Uh, as said, basically what you have to do is to provide your own controller. In the controller, um, there's a, a query method. You override it and in the query method, you just have to, to load the data and to return it. That's it, basically. <clears throat> so this is uh, a screenshot of the example module. Uh, it's actually a few. Um, it lists the Picasso photos and it, as you see, uh, you can see the images. The images uh, are loaded directly from Google, so they are not locally. And as all the data is uh, just uh, loaded on demand from Google. Um, on the right side, uh, you can see um, the album, uh, which is uh, a separated entity. And in this case, the fuse integration just uh, loads the entity label. Uh, on the left, you can see the image. This is the, the fully rendered entity, as it's uh, pretty easy uh, to uh, implement the API uh, to have entity view support for your entity. I've done so and just uh, output uh, the image there, which is pretty neat because you will have a regular template for that. And you will have few mode support for that. So uh, females can work with that as they are used to. They, they can use the, the template, overwrite it, uh, few mode specific, and so on. Yes, then uh, I've also done uh, another display of the few in, in a table. Here you see uh, there um, is support for um, using all of the different properties that are defined as fuse field automatically you can just add them in. And also the album, which is a, a referenced entity, automatically is exposed as fuse relationship. So on the, on the uh, photo entity, there's actually a defined entity property, which references the album. And uh, the fuse integration automatically makes use of that. And once you add uh, the relationship in fuse, you can also access uh, the properties of the album in fuse. Mm. And as you see on the left, uh, we have a pretty long ID uh, for the uh, Google Picasso photos. It's the, the full uh, URL. Uh, this is because we really need a, a unique identifier uh, for being able to expose uh, data as entities to the system because data need to be able to look it up. And uh, in the case uh, of the uh, Google Picasso API, 
there were uh, no simple integer ID or so because uh, the, the simple integer ID is also is only unique inside an album. So we had uh, to use uh, the full URL or at least any other uh, unique combination. In the case of the album, uh, there is a simple integer ID uh, which we uh, were able to use. So um, you might wonder whether it's required for entities to, to have integer ID. Actually, it's not. It's only required uh, if the entity is fieldable. And as our entity isn't fieldable, it's fine uh, to have uh, a non-integer um, ID. But uh, some contrib modules uh, assume that uh, your entity ID will be an integer. So if you have uh, an a uh, remote entity implemented which has a non-integer ID, uh, you might run into some bugs with some modules. So hopefully we'll get them sorted out pretty soon. Okay, uh, as always, there's some room for improvements. Uh, what I would like to see is a better view support uh, based upon the entity field query. Um, there's already uh, a module for that, which is uh, as of now a bit outdated. It needs to be updated to work again. But uh, once we have that, uh, you could also uh, implement uh, filter support and sorting support in Fuse rather easily, just by making sure that your entity um, works fine with entity field query. Then also there's no read-only mode. It's, it's uh, possible for an entity to be read-only, it's uh, rather simple. Uh, you just leave out uh, the save, create, and delete methods, basically. Usually, I also uh, add an exception uh, in, into the methods if a module calls it, so it's notified that this doesn't work and it's not supposed to work. But there's no, no way in the system currently to denote that an entity type is really uh, read-only, so modules cannot know that generically. So this is also some room for improvement. And as I already mentioned in Profile 2, it would be also nice if the API could provide some sane uh, default generated display or some ge default generated edit form, which would just work based upon the entity property information. Yeah, that's not there yet. So, okay, let's have a, a short look at Drupal 8 entity API and what's going on there. So for Drupal 8, um, there's um, quite some work which has to be done and some of it has al be already done. Uh, we have already uh, entity API in Drupal 8 which works with classed entity objects. So once you have an entity then, you'll have methods on it based up my defined interface. So you can easily get the entity type of it, you can get the ID of it, stuff like that. And uh, we have a full CRUD storage controller in core, so once you define a new entity type, you can easily have it uh, working with full CRUD like it's possible already in Drupal 7 with the entity API module. Uh, currently, this is in Drupal core only implemented for, for comments. Uh, all the other entity types uh, still have to be ported, so this is really work in progress. Uh, this is uh, how you can already work with comments in Drupal 8. Uh, it might uh, look familiar to you because it's really similar to the way the Entity API module works in Drupal 7. So you, you basically, when you create a new comment in Drupal 8, you have to use Entity Create because it's not going uh, to be uh, valid to have a standard class comment object anymore. If you want a comment ob object, you have to use entity create so you get the classed object. And, but once you have the classed object, you can make use uh, of all of uh, the methods on it, like saving or getting the identifier of it, deleting it. And also we have helper functions like entity delete multiple, uh, which allow it to delete multiple entities at once. That's already in core. And for that to work, we basically have classes like that we have a, a custom uh, comment storage controller in Drupal Core, which implements the comment module specific bits. Uh, and we have an entity database storage controller, which is the generic uh, full CRUD uh, storage controller. Uh, you can make use in Drupal 8 then to implement a, a new entity type and you will receive uh, full CRUD functionality based upon that. Then we have a comment class. 
uh, which extends uh, the general entity class. The entity class really is just a helper class which uh, implements uh, the useful methods and the methods are defined in the entity interface. So every entity has to have these methods and the entity a class just implements it for you so you don't have to do it every time you are implementing a new entity. And the comment class then uh, implements again comment specific bits. In particular, it, it defines the properties a comment has, like the, the ID, subject, uh, stuff like that. Okay, that's my presentation. So, are there any questions? If you have any questions, please stand up and uh, come to the microphone so that uh, everybody can hear you. Hi, big fan of the API. Made my life a lot easier today. Um, for Drupal 8, um, are there talk of like a forum, a, f a forum, a form controller to help control some of the, um, you know, some of the form out of the box functionality so you can have your submit and validation functions in a class rather than in the form API? Um, there are no specific plans for that yet, uh, but it kind of is planned to do something like that, to have a controller that is cares about uh, generating the form for an entity, so it, that is going to be easier. Uh, but that's uh, still on the, on the road and uh, work hasn't started in that area yet. But if I did it, it would be accepted though. If I submitted a patch, it would be accepted. Probably, right? If that's, is it, it's a concept though you want to do, right? Yeah, okay, yeah okay. It's, it's something that uh, I, I would like to see. Yeah, it's, it's just a question whether it's going to, uh, uh, to make it into Drupal 8, whether we have enough time to get there, yeah. But still, if we haven't, uh, I think it's something where we could work on and contribute to as far as uh, the uh, basic architecture uh, is in core. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Hi. Uh, for your Picasa demo that you did, was that a non-DB entity example? Exactly, yeah. That okay. were uh, entities that were directly loaded uh, from the web service from Google Picasa <laughs> and just listed on your site. Is there a way to conserve API calls for like things like sorting so, so that you don't have to refetch the list if you're just going to let the view be sortable? Or does it refetch the list every time? Uh, as of now, it has no, uh, no support for, for sorting at all, because for that you uh, would uh, need an API for it, like uh, entity field query, or you directly do it yourself in the Fuse integration. So that's really something you have to take care of manually as of now. So the view can't, so the view can't just do sorting with its built-in sorting? Uh, no, stuff? yeah. You could implement, uh, a fuse handler that do it for you, which just sort the object in memory, that okay. would work. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Is there any plan to um, implement revision support in Drupal 8 in, for entities? Uh, yes, there's the plan to do it, and we have already uh, revisions in nodes, and the plan is to abstract that and to make it a uh, general functionality which is implemented in the controller so that it can be easily implemented and enabled for every entity. Thank you. Okay, if there aren't any questions anymore, then thank you. and. Please uh, don't forget to, to take the survey and tell you what you think about the session.